Hello friends, welcome back to CSAP.net online training video series. Today we are going to discuss the real-time examples of delegate. In our previous few videos, we understand the concept of delegate, we understand the concept of single cast and multicast delegate. See, understanding the concept is fine, but it doesn't make sense if you do not use those concepts in your real-time application. Right? So it is also that important to understand how to use such concept in real-time application. So in this video, I'm going to discuss delegates with real-time examples. Right? The delegates are one of the most important concepts that you need to understand as a C -sharp developer. And it is also important to understand the real-time examples. Right? Why? Now in many interviews, most of the interviewer ask you to explain the usage of delegates in real time project that you have worked on right so so it is it is my request uh, it's my request to all of you before proceeding to this video please watch our previous two videos where we discuss the single cast delegate and the multiple cast delegates right and today we are going today uh, what i'm planning to do is i'm going to give you two different real time examples of delegate so that you will get a better idea of when and how to use delegates in real time applications let us understand the first example let's say we have a class called worker and this class having a method called to work what is our business requirement is when we invoke the to work method we need to send a notification about the percentage of work done to the consumer as well as once the work completed we also need to send the notification for example let's say this is my worker class right and this worker class having this to work method. What is my business requirement? Whenever the user call this method, he will send the number of hours to be worked and what type of work it is going to be done, right? And here each time, suppose the user send the number of hours is five and the work type is some generating report, right? Suppose one employee is working for power five hours for generating or preparing the report. So in that case, what our business requirement is for each hour, how much percentage of work done in one hour, how much work is done that you need to send a notification to the consumer. For example, one hour, you need to send a notification, two hour, you need to send a notification, three hour, you need to send a notification that this much of work done. And once the work completed, again, you need to send a notification to the consumer, right, or to the client. But, but what the important thing is, to whom you need to send the notification, right, to whom this do work method is going to send, send the notification, this do work method have no idea. Then who is going to decide to whom send the notification? The color of this do work method. For example, from this uh, program class, right? From this program class, we are going to create the instance of a worker class and we are going to invoke this do work method. And this program class will decide. Now, this main method of program class is the color of this do work method. And this program class main method will decide that at run time, this do work method is going to send the notification to this is workers underscore work performed color method for each hour. And once the work completed, then he needs to send the notification to this work completed method, right? Now, now you might be thinking that what I can do is I can hard code the method here, right? You can hard code this method call inside this for loop body. And you need to call this method inside this uh, outside the for, for loop body. Right, that that what you might be thinking, but see, this do work method have no idea to call this method or this method. By looking at this code, you can see here. Yeah, I I can see these two methods, and I can directly call this method here. But what happened if some other classes is there? Some other classes, some other method is there. They also trying to call this do work method, but they want to execute a different method, or they want to send the notification to some or some different method. Then at that time, what you will do? How can you manage those things inside this worker class to work method? So you should not try or you should not hard code the method call inside this to work method. If you hard coded the call, then that is hard coded. You cannot change anything. We need to make the loosely type system. We need to develop the application as loosely type possible as right. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to go for delegates. 
right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a two delegates, right? And this do work method is going to accept two delegates, right? And those delegate signature is going to be same as this two method signature. And on this for loop body, I need to invoke one delegate. And from outside the for loop body, I'm going to invoke the other delegate. Okay, let's see the complete code, right? So in this case, I just replace this code with this one. So now you can see uh, this, this is the same class, same worker class, same do work method, but currently this class taking two uh, delegates. Uh, so you can say I'm defining two delegates here. You can define the delegate anywhere in your application, right? Because behind the scene, they are going to be classes. Work perform handler is going to be one class and work completed handler is going to be another class. So whenever we are saying delegate, they are going to be classes after compilation. Compiler will convert the delegate to classes, right? So in this case, you can see uh, my uh, do work method taking one instance of uh, one parameter of work perform handler class and another parameter of work complete handler delegate. Delegate and class, you can use any term, right? Because uh, we are creating as a delegate, but behind the scene, when we compile this application, this delegate will convert it to a class, right? Now, now once this delegate receives the parameter, right, we just need to call that a delegate instance, right? Just need to call the delegate instant and notify that one hour. So first time loop is executed. So this will become one, zero plus one. Second time it will become two. Third time it will become three, right? That means we are just sending uh, or we are just calling this instance for each hour. How much work is completed? That what we are notifying to the consumer by calling this uh, delicate instance, right? And the, once this for loop completed means the work has been completed, then in that case, we are just invoking the other delegate that is work completed handler delegate, right? And in this case, we are just sending the notification and we are informing to the consumer that the work has been completed, right? Now, now what is the important thing? The important thing is the two handler method, right? The delegate one referring to some handler method and delegate to also referring to some handler method, right? Those handler method signature should be same as this two signature, right? Let me copy this two method, okay? So let me show you these things practically, right? Okay, now you can see these are my two handler. Okay, let me copy these two things now. Can this two delegate signature is same as the above two types? Okay. Can is the delegate signature is same as the handler method signature? Okay, let's convert this. So you can see here the return type is void in the method, and the return type of a delegate is also void. The delegate taking two parameter, one is integer type, another is string type, and here the method taking two parameter, one is integer type, and another is string type, and the access specifier. In this case, it is going to public, and the access specifier actually not matter in this case, right? And coming to this uh, delegate, so the return type is void, and in this case, it is taking a single string parameter, and here the return type is void and it is taking a single parameter that means when this work completed method uh, you can see work completed method referring to this worker underscore work completed uh, see this work completed method is uh, registered with this work completed handler and the worker underscore work perform method is registered with the work perform handler right so that means delegate one pointing to work perform method and delegate two pointing to work perform or uh, work completed uh, handler method, right? That means if I invoke this delegate one instance, then this method is going to be executed. And if I execute or I invoke this delegate two instance, right? Then this method, which is referred by delegate two instance is going to be executed. And if you look at the signature of the worker class, the third and second parameter are nothing but the work perform handler in and the work completed handler. That means first parameter should be work perform handler instance. That is what I'm passing here. And the second parameter is going to be work completed handler. So I'm creating the instance of a work completed handler and passing that parameter to the work method. Now, 
it is coming to the do work method right the do work method what he is trying to do is he is trying to execute uh, the loop right so how many times the loop is going to be executed in this time we are passing five so five means this integer hours hours is going to five that means this loop is going to be started from zero and it will continue for the i value four that means five times this loop is going to be executed and each time the loop executed it is uh, doing some processing and for that purpose i am using threaded slip method this will intentionally slip uh, this execution or delay the execution for uh, one second and after one second it is going to invoke this uh, delegate one so delegate one means which method is referred by delegate one instance to work for uh, method so this uh, body uh, or this method definition is going to be executed and this method definition is going to be executed for the five times. And once that method execution completed, it will call this delegate two instance. And delegate two is uh, pointing to this worker underscore work completed method. That means this method is going to be executed uh, right now. From some other classes, you also need to do the same thing. So what you need to do is you just need to create the handler method and then you just need to call this one so right now see um what i'm trying to do is i'm just uh, referring this one was perform and this is going to work perform and we just need to pass delegate to one and the second parameter is going to be delegated to so this is how from two different places some different method are going to be used as the callback method so in this case the callback method are going to be some work performed, some work completed, and from this place, the some uh, the callback method are going to be work performed and work completed. Now, if you run the application, then you will see that work performed method is going to be executed for five times, and the work completed is going to be executed only once, and that is true after. Uh, all the works have been completed. You can see one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hours. After five hours, it is showing that generating report work has been completed. So this is one of the scenario, right? One of the real time scenario uh, where you can use uh, this uh, concept called a delegate. So you can think it like a micromanagement, right? Suppose your manager, your manager assigning you some task, right? Your manager assigning you some task and he's saying, for each hour, how much task you are done, please inform right? And once the task com completed, then again also you just inform So it's a kind of a micromanagement kind of thing you can see or, or you need to understand this thing, right? So this is one of the real-time example where you can use delegates now. Now let us see another real-time example. So let us understand uh, you are having one class uh, and this class having some few properties uh, id name gender experience and salary so you have a simple class and this simple class having five properties now now what you want to do is you need to write a method in the employee class which can be used to promote the employees the method that you are going to write will take a list of employee as a parameter and then should print the name of all those employees who are eligible for a promotion. But the logic based on which the employee gets promoted should not be hard coded, right? So you need to create one method inside this employee class, that is fine. And that employee class will take a list of employee as a parameter, that is fine. But then you need to pr uh, print the name of so those employees who are getting promoted. But how those employees are going to be promoted, that logic should not be hard coded. At the times, we may promote employee based on their experience. At time, we may promote employee based on their salary and maybe some other reason like performance of the employee. So the logic to promote the employee should not be hard coded within the method. Then how we can achieve this? This can achieve very easily by using the concept called a delegate, right? Let us understand this with one example, right? Let me create a class file, right? And this class file is going to take one uh, yeah, this is my class file. Let me copy the code. This is a very simple class you can see. 
these are the five properties and this is my promote employee method this employee method taking list of employee as a parameter apart from this you can see the second parameter is nothing but one delegate and that delegate is nothing but it is going to return a boolean value and it will take one parameter of employee type that means here we are looping through all the employees list of employments we are looping through all the employees and for each employee we are calling the method which this delegate referring to right this delegate is uh, we are invoking this delegate means this delegate is referred by one method and that method accept one parameter of employee type and that method is going to return me whether the employee is promoted or not if the it is written to then we just need to print the employee name that is promoted and if false then we just need to continue our program execution that means here the point that you need to remember this is employee eligible it is a delegate and we are just invoking the delegate instance here and that delegate is going to be referred by some method and that method is going to be executed at runtime. time right let me copy the code right let me paste it inside this class Right. So you can see here the program class is there and in the inside this class, first of all, I'm creating a list of three employees, right? So you can see I'm creating a list of three employees and then I'm creating one delegate. So, so this is nothing but my callback method and this callback method is same uh, signature is same as the signature of this delegate. Let me copy the signature of the delegate here and put it here so that you can compare the signature right so what is the return type boolean so the return type is boolean what is the type of the parameter the delegate is taking employee type so this promote method also taking the parameter of an employee type that means this promote method signature and this delegate signature is going to be same right and this signature having currently the logic to promote the employee based on the salary so if the employee salary is greater than 10,000, then promote the employee. And if the salary is less than 10,000 or equals to 10,000, don't promote this employee, right? Now from the main method, what we need to do, we need to create an instance of the delegate. And while creating the instance, we need to provide the, uh, this promote method as a parameter to the constructor. And then we just need to call this employee class promote employee method. And while calling, we just need to pass the list of employees and eligible to promote the employee. Uh, delegate instance as a parameter and this delegate instance referring to this promote method right at runtime when we invoke this delegate then this uh, uh, promote method what this delegate is referring that is going to be executed right and that is going to be executed it will take the employee as a parameter and then it will check whether that employee is eligible for promotion or not based on the salary if the salary is greater than 10,000 then it is going to be promoted else it is not going to be promoted see now employee two employee are getting promoted tomorrow you, you you just need to change the requirement right tomorrow what is your requirement now if the experience is greater than 10,000 then you just need to promote the employee so you just need to change this one if experience is greater than 10 then you just need to promote the employee so in this case you will see that right only one employee getting promoted so with these changes you do not need to do any changes in the promote employee class as long as the delegate signature and your promote uh, method is signature is going to be same it is going to be work as expected right now now there is an issue what is the issue the issue is this employee is em eligible employee instance this method is taking right now it is also possible that i can make this instance as long right i can make this instance as well but if i make this instance as small right now if i run this application then you will see that it is going to throw me some uh, runtime exception why because uh, you are invoking uh, uh, one uh, you are invoking the delegate which is not uh, uh, initialized right or you can say it is not initialized and it is having some null value and null value we cannot invoke the uh, method right so this is the reason why you can say i'm getting this exception so how we can overcome this exception? We can overcome this exception by using the concept event handling, right? Events that we will discuss in our coming session, right? Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. In case you need the text version, in case you need the text version of this video, right? The link for the same is provided in the video description.